So I think one of the most interesting kind of principles with training, and maybe the thing that makes people the most interested, is when we come to what exercise am I going to do? So exercise selection and then specificity. So how close should I stick to the snatch and the clean and jerk? So I think what we need to talk about is, and this is specifically for, well, it's for weightlifting, but how we do this within the weightlifting AI app is, how do we determine what exercises we need to pick for the athlete and how sort of far removed from the snatch and clean and jerk we go and how we even quantify, you know, how how much transfer there's going to be towards a snatch and clean and jerk. Yeah. So, so the main way that the AI actually determines what exercises you're going to do, mm-hmm. uh, outside of it being determined by you know phases, so not just you know hypertrophy, strength, peaking, uh, we look at like a decomposition of all of your lifting variables you can give us. So all the exercises you know, mm-hmm. let's say it's you know snatch, power snatch. Hang snatch, block snatch, and the hang snatch from below the knee, block snatch from above the knee, and then overhead squat. So those exercises, five exercises, give us, one, we know that those are the five highest correlated exercises to your results that are all of various different uh, execution. So not like a, you know, not like a snatch with a clean grip or something. Mm-hmm. We don't have good data on that. Um, so those five highest correlated exercises, we can look at them, and each one of them is unique because it affects or has a very significant impact on one or more uh, phases of the, we call like the seven phases of the lift. Mm-hmm. So the landmarks within the lift that are identical for every person. Right. Right. So the start position is a thing you have to do. Mm-hmm. The transition as the bar passes your knee is a yeah. thing everyone does, right? The explosion, turnover, the catch, right? These are all universal things. Yeah. Each one of these different phases... Uh, or so each one of these different lifts affects one of those phases slightly differently. Mm-hmm. And we can look at how each one of those ones relates to your snatch as far as what an ideal or a common ratio is mm-hmm. and see if, hey, your you know, hang snatch below the knee is really low relative to your power snatch. So what would that mean? I've got a bad transition past the knee. It tells but, us two things, yeah. right? So we would say the first thing is it tells us that potentially the transition isn't good because mm-hmm. the bar is below your knee and you're and you're suffering from there. Mm-hmm. We also know your power snatch is strong, which tells us that your finish is relatively strong, yeah. right? The final extension is strong. And because your hang snatch is relatively low, as you move the bar closer to your explosion, closer to your hip, in the lift and reduce the Mm -hmm. time you have to actually accelerate the bar, Mm -hmm. it increases the difficulty of the lift, but also it amplifies how fast you have to move under the bar. Yeah. So we can infer a couple of things from those two variables, which is that one, you're probably not great at turning the bar over and catching it deep. Mm -hmm. You might have a positional problem in the transition, right? And you're potentially fairly strong because your power snatch is relatively high compared to your classic lift. So we can look at that data and then say, what are the best list of exercises to address that particular phase and then apply that to one of those exercise categories. Mm-hmm. So what we do is say of those five categories, power snatch, snatch, hang snatch, block snatch, overhead squat, mm-hmm. we can say which ones of these need a lot more volume than the others, right? right? Probably not power snatch because we know that's really good, mm-hmm. right? Hang snatch for sure, we would emphasize that. Yeah. Block snatches, we would probably choose something that revolves around uh, the position below the knee because mm-hmm. we already know that's kind of weak. Yeah. Right. We don't need to emphasize, you know, uh, any kind of deficit lifts or tempo lifts from the floor mm-hmm. because it's unlikely that your first pull is weak if your transition is relatively good. Right. Right. Yeah. And we know that your power snatch is somewhat strong. Mm-hmm. And then after that, we can look at like overhead squat and say. Is that deficient or not? Right. Probably not. Maybe it is. You know, we would have to know that. Obviously, I didn't mm-hmm. give the information at the beginning, but right. yeah. it gives us a, a a much more clear picture to say, okay, this is what we need to target. Yeah. Then what we do is these exercises are essentially sequenced in lists, right? So the first list is what are the you know let's say five best options for these different exercises. So is it just to confirm? So you've got like these five different variations of the snatch each would suggest some kind of technical weakness if it was lacking in that one mm-hmm. and then off each of these exercises there's a list of it's like a it's like a tree right yeah and it keeps branching yep. out to yep. these exercises help with that which will help with this that, that yeah exactly yeah. i always like to think of the exercises uh exercise um categories as essentially trees where it's like 
The trunk is the main one, hang yeah. snatch below the knee, and then branching off of that has a slightly different effect. Yeah. But the core elements of that are the same. Mm -hmm. Hang snatches are all relatively similar in their mm -hmm. in their execution, but slight differences can affect one type of you know, one of the phases of the lift a little bit differently. And so we, we draw conclusions and say, okay, which ones of those from that tree do we mm -hmm. really think are going to emphasize your weakness? Mm -hmm. Then we sequence that list, meaning we start from the most specific mm -hmm. to your problem. Mm -hmm. It's the transition phase, yeah, right? Yeah. So we're going to start with hang snatch below the knees, block snatch below the knees, etc. And then we sequence that list, meaning we move from most specific to mm -hmm. your weakness from phase to phase mm -hmm. to most specific to the sport. Yeah, right, So we right, would right. eventually move downward yeah. towards the floor yeah. to a classic snatch. That makes sense. Because I think when you first started saying that last bit about we're going to start with most specific, I was thinking, right. but hang on, because we've got to start more GPP general, but actually it's most specific to something that we're trying to fix, which isn't the actual right. snatch and the clean and jerk quite yet. So we're still far away and we're coming yeah. in a little bit. Yeah, specificity is an interesting thing because specificity is, it needs definition, Yeah. right? You, nothing is specific if you're not mm -hmm. defining it, yeah. right? Yeah. So we're always saying like our training block has to have the goal of directed adaptation, meaning mm -hmm. that the, the adaptations we make in this training block are directed at something. Mm -hmm. And initially in training, the farther we are from a meet, we're directing our, our adaptations at things that we think will lay the foundation for further success in the next training blocks, yeah, yeah. which ultimately we know are going to become a more of a weightlifting meet, yes. right? Or more towards max snatch and clean and jerk. Right. So how have you decided, you know, when you're looking at the five exercises and how much they correlate to the snatch or five other exercises which might help with a single variation of the lift, how are you deciding which is more specific and which is going to sort of impact the lift above it or the trunk beneath it? more than another so we look at we look at historical information right yeah. we know that obviously the closer we get to those core five which have very good research behind them mm -hmm. that we can be sure of what the effect those will have on yeah. uh, on the lift is as we branch away from that trunk and mm -hmm. get to more weird things so like for example um let's say a hang snatch below the knee with no footwork like right. no foot movement mm -hmm. we have to make an assessment does the no foot component of this have an effect that detracts from the specificity of this exercise to that problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and there's there's a gradation we have to, to come to or you know sort of create for this, which is, you know, does this actually have an impact? If we mm -hmm. look at, you know, lifters performing the lift, does it have a huge impact? Is it not? Um, we used a lot of data that I had from lifters I coached as to some of these things having positive impacts or, mm -hmm. or negative impacts. As you move further from the branch, it becomes less relevant because you're getting further and further from mm -hmm. specificity, right? Mm -hmm. So if you were to do hang snatch from below the knee with no feet, you know, no hook, and I mean, yeah. whatever other thing you could add to it, yeah, no yeah. contact, right. it just starts to move so far away that mm -hmm. you've added so many more modifiers and conditions mm -hmm. to the lift that it becomes something that's like, we already are detracting one intensity because the exercise becomes relatively harder to do so you're you're removing the actual transfer mm -hmm. already because it becomes like something you can only do with like 70% of your max. Mm -hmm. So the transfer is much less. Yeah. And then additionally, the other variations just change the technical execution of the lift. Mm -hmm. So it becomes, you know, just becomes more different. Right. And I guess the selecting the correct exercises is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Working out how far removed mm -hmm. from the snatch and the clean jerk from the sport we go is important. And with sort of standard template based programming it's almost as though because everybody's doing the same program the program can't be written for the individual mm -hmm. and so they have to just sort of guess and say we're gonna all work on the first pull or the transition phase and it's like well that might be exacerbating a problem for one person right might be fixing it for another and it might be kind of you know net neutral for another yeah um and even as a coach and i know this i don't do it anymore coaching that is um I know that you've probably had this, so you're way beyond it now, but a lot of people, individuals, coaches, have a bias towards a certain corrective exercise. Mm -hmm. Like, I was a big no foot snatcher yeah. giver I, to athletes. Loved one it. of my favorite exercises. Right, yeah. And it was just, for me, it was like, well, this is going to correct bar path and balance on the foot and yeah. all these various things. But there would be a problem with that because sometimes an athlete could do something better. And by, you know, in the weightlifting AI app, obviously it's, 
it's sort of principle driven and there's some data backing it and so it doesn't fall back on the problem of what if i'm analyzing even correctly mm. you know like it's going to know okay this is actually the most specific to what you need right. it's not like i'm going to see that exercise and go i just don't like that one though so let's do another one it's, right the app doesn't care what and what's great about the the architecture of the app and the ai is that these lists will get reordered based on the data we draw right mm -hmm. so as the user base grows we develop better lists we develop better right. you know say hey you know we're seeing much more correlation between xyz exercise mm. and fixing this position yeah we'll reorder the list a little bit all uh, right um, and that's also going to be dependent on on different things right like a no hook no feet snatch might have high correlation to results mm. for advanced lifters but a lower correlation with beginner lifters mm -hmm. right yeah, because the yeah, coordination yeah. of the movement is uh, is difficult right so we have to take a lot of things into consideration which are really like i like to think of all exercise selection all programs are is just lists yeah right it's just a list of different things and you organize it you know, mm -hmm. with specificity based on what your priority is. Right. And so we can constantly readdress these lists. We can constantly readjust them. The AI will continually improve because mm -hmm. the list will continually improve. Mm -hmm. Our understanding of what exercises are doing to people will grow as the user base grows. Right. So as people are doing it, they're actually feeding us information that we can do something with. Oh, that's interesting. So it's not just that we have a base of knowledge now mm -hmm. that we can stick to. It's that this is the best base of knowledge available but it's going to improve yeah. over time as more people do it, as more people stick with it. Yeah. The Basically, the value proposition of weightlifting AI being individualized and responsive becomes uh, it becomes greater and greater yeah. over time. Yeah, and, and the goal is to not have to do that through like brute force right. and say, okay, let's just start and just do this with 10,000 lifters. Mm -hmm. We have plenty of excellent data that's been gathered by the Soviets we have, we have expert coaching and expert coaching logic that started the program. So we have a great point to start off mm -hmm. from. The refinement of that, though, will be through data. Right. That's the goal. We know yeah. that data is going to give us the right answer mm -hmm. in the end. And this is something we were talking about yesterday in one of our meetings was to do with the analytics that we show. And one of the things that we were looking at, and we don't know whether we're going to keep this sort of on the back end for us to have available, is almost creating... I think you called it was like a radar yeah, I mean, radar where, chart radar chart snatch in the middle and then there's a web of like this is what your hang snatch sh should be or your block snatch or your power mm -hmm. overhead squat and then this is where you actually are so we start getting an image of what is lacking and almost being able to whether we do decide to show that to people or not but if we did they can sort of see it and how it's being attacked and how that is filling out over right. time making up its sort of yeah. deficit which for me as someone who's just like a weightlifting ad maybe that's not something that every weightlifter needs to see but at the same time it's really from someone like me is really exciting to yeah see. it's cool yeah it's one, like a health health check on your snapshot yeah almost. exactly and one thing that's kind of cool to us is that that radar chart could be adjusted right yeah. so if we decide you know we don't actually like what we you know where the ai is at as far as you know saying that you know the ideal ratio for for hang snatch to snatch is 95%, right? right? Uh, we're gonna make that 100% mm -hmm. because we found that there's more success with people that have a little bit stronger hang snatch than snatch yeah. or 101 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that radar chart, not only can the individual's radar change the shape of their lifts in that yeah. web, but the actual radar chart right. can change yeah. so that it pulls the web into different positions, yeah. right? And that's a that's a beauty of the ability to really adjust the system mm -hmm. and have it suit lots of different people, right? right? And are you, this, this is just something that comes to me now, are you putting any variation, I'm thinking of the block snatch, as something that should be in surplus of the snatch? Or uh, is everything a percentage below? Uh, as of right now, the system uh, basically adjusts to just below your best. Right. Yeah. We know that a lot of people are going to have like a, a power snatch or, a, or sorry, a, uh, like a block snatch above the knee. Generally, some people are high in excess yeah. of their snatch, some are low. Um, we're going to start with a, basically the standard model that mm -hmm. we have, which is slightly below 100% mm -hmm. for those. Mm -hmm. um, hang snatch a little bit less than yeah. that uh, because that gives us a better image as far as like where how far they are away from the snatch what the right. actual errors are right yeah. if we if we are too far off on that yeah we can get a lot of incorrect information where hang snatch mm -hmm. might look like a really bad exercise yeah, because yeah. it's we were wrong on the numbers mm -hmm. those numbers are drawn a lot from soviet information we had yeah, yeah. but also just from 
you know, mm-hmm. uh, whatever current information we can gather mm-hmm. with lifters I've coached. And also, I mean, for just, if, just because there are a good proportion of people who block snatch more than they snatch doesn't mean that that's where you need to be. It might be that that is in itself mm-hmm. uh, a deficit from right. something else. It's like a lack in the, in the pull and the transition, starting position, all these sorts of things, pulling strength, back strength, that is causing them to be able to do... Yeah, a surplus in and books, huh? really what it's doing is we're looking at proportion because mm-hmm. proportion gives us an example in a closed system. When I can't look at what you what you're doing, I can't identify you and say that's your problem. Yeah, I need to know proportionally what's going on. Mm-hmm. If someone told me the simplest example, if someone told me, "Hey, uh, I got this guy. He you know he back squats 100 kilos and he can deadlift 300 kilos. Mm-hmm. What do you think is is his weakness?" Mm. Like we're probably all gonna be like, "Oh, his legs are weak." Yeah, right. It's super obvious. Yeah. The more subtle that gets, the harder it is. Mm-hmm. But we, we've, you know, the goal here is to design something that actually can get that tease out that subtlety, right. so we can look at the proportion and say, hey, his block snatch is is really high in excess of these other things. Mm-hmm. His his hang snatch and his block snatch are both really high, and his his uh, classic snatch on the floor isn't as good. Yeah, that tells us kind of right away that like that first pull is probably an issue. Yeah, right. There's definitely energy needs to be mm-hmm. devoted to that. Mm-hmm. Right, so we have a, lots of different things we're trying to tease out. Not just, it's not just as simple as like, oh, your back squat is one hundred and forty-one percent of your clean and jerk. Mm-hmm. You should do more clean and jerks. Yeah, right. It's looking at the differences between multiple things and then comparing them to try and, uh, you know, deduce what is the actual most likely culprit yeah. or most likely weakest thing. That makes sense. I think my my last sort of thing that I, I want to meant or bring up really ask is. When we are, you know, we've got five major exercises per exercise. Um, And then there are a list of other exercises in order of how much they might help each individual one of those. And you said we're going to start with the most specific. Mm -hmm. What's the case where we wouldn't? Is that if maybe two of the five major lifts were in a deficit and they have a different list of five helpful exercises each, which are all quite different, but one of them is the same? So the other side of this is complex exercises, okay. right? Where yeah. we combine. <laughs> I didn't know it was going there, but okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah, where, yeah, where we combine different things that are that are potentially addressing two issues at the same time. Yeah. Um, if you have two things, I think what I understood is if you have two things that are very similarly bad. Yeah. Right. Which do we give priority to? Yes. Right. And so we already have a ranking of which ones which which of these five exercises is most specific Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. what's the most transfer we get from that so like an example like a hang snatch is slightly higher transfer than block snatch right right um it's it's minimal but we know the correlation is a little bit higher uh Uh, we can look and say hey if those are both equally relatively bad it's not that we're looking at you have to do more hang snatch or block snatch it's telling us that it's not the the first pull off the floor Mm-hmm. And it's potentially definitely not the turnover, mm-hmm. right? It's it's something else, right? right? It's these it's the, the transition and the explosion. Yeah. So we would then have complexes that are created based on what's going to address our, our explosion most, mm-hmm. right? Well, how can we maximize that? Mm-hmm. So it would give us you know potentially I'm just making this up, mm-hmm. but like you know a, a snatch from the hang above the knee plus yeah. below the knee, yeah. or you know three three hang snatches from from the blocks. Mm-hmm. Uh, because we need, we can isolate those things mm-hmm. as being the most the most obvious choices, right. right? So we can look at complexes as a way of trying to spread out some of that to cover more bases. Yeah, complexes are already are already less specific because you're not doing one rep, mm-hmm. right? But it allows us to target multiple technical positions at the same time in you know a more dense way. Yeah, that makes sense. So I feel like if people listening think to themselves, that sounds amazing, but <laughs> there is so much there and I don't know if I can account for that all myself. The good news is you don't have to because the weightlifting right. AI app will work all this out for you. It's sort of something that will improve with you over time and start you out in probably a better situation than certainly any generic template program can, but it's, uh, it's unbelievable. So we'll put a link down below if you're interested in learning more, signing up, getting information about it, so you can check that out. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.